What's going on guys? Soldier Only here from Sports Nerd Web with Sports Nerd Web Weekly. Uh, I'm coming at you again this week uh, a little late than I usually do. Um, as you know, I usually record and post these on Tuesday, but today is actually Thanksgiving Day Thursday. Uh, it's just been really busy at work lately. Um, it's, you know, working 12 hours a day now and it's just, you know, it's getting, it's getting harder and harder, uh, you know, to keep on track and on schedule. Uh, you know, with all the with all this other stuff. So, but we'll get right into it. Uh, one of the the big news uh, from this week is actually uh, Survival 1.5 finally went live for the division. Uh, j just came out a couple days ago, and uh, I actually just put up uh, a first impression video up uh, yesterday on it, so you can check that out on the channel. Uh, but so far, it's it's looking really good. Um, even even before this, Division was actually starting to look look a lot better. Uh, it was I think I believe it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Massive put out uh, update 1.4 went live, and that retooled and restructured a lot of the game's core mechanics, uh, such as like the time to kill for the enemies. Uh, it all they also adjusted the time to kill for the player as well, so it made the enemies not so overpowered and uh, it definitely made the game it it definitely made the game's difficulty a lot more balanced out uh it also introduced the the world tier um update 1.4 introduced four world world tiers and actually with this survival 1.5 update there's actually a fifth world tier available now that you can get into uh, i haven't played that world tier yet um because uh the short time that i have played with update 1.5 i just did a few playthroughs of survival uh, but it's a, like I said, it's a really interesting mode. It's really neat. Uh, it's, it's a standalone mode, so it's separate from, from the base game. Uh, when you, what you do is, uh, you go down to the underground terminal, like, like where you go when you go into the underground section. So you go down there and where the HBT agents are down there, there's a new door open and you can go down there and you can load into the survival mode. And when you're loading in, you can actually load in with a group or solo, and then you can choose either PvP or PvE. Uh, if you choose PvP, that makes it so that other players will actually be able to kill you, and, and likewise, you can kill them as well and take their loot that, they, that they've been able to accumulate during the survival mission. So um, I haven't played the PvP mission yet. I've only done the PvE. Uh, and then, so once you load into that, a quick cutscene happens. Uh, you're, it, it is your same agent from the base game, so he still does look the same. Uh, however, he has just basic gear and I think uh, just one handgun. So you have just a sidearm. You don't have like a, a primary or a secondary weapon. Uh, and there's this quick cutscene. Your agent is getting on a helicopter to go to another part of the city, I believe. I can't remember where he was heading to, but. Long story short, it crashes, and you come to at a random part in the city. Actually, uh, I think I've played three or four instances, and two of the instances I spawned uh, inside, like uh, it was like an inside like a church, I believe. Uh, another time I spawned actually just outside on the ground, and then another time I spawned inside like a house, like a hideout. <clears throat> So you can so you can spawn just randomly in the city, and the main goal is is to survive. Hence the name survival, is to survive. You have to get to the dark zone and get some anti antivirals, because actually what happened during the wreck, you actually got injured and you're actually infected now. So you have to get to the dark zone to get these anti antivirals, and then you have to call for an extraction and get out of the dark zone uh, to complete the mode. And on your way to the dark zone, uh, you know, you have to, you have to survive the elements. There's a big blizzard going on. There's up in the top right, uh, in the top right corner of the screen, there's your body temperature now. Uh, and then it has the temperature of the environment as well. So, uh, the, when you get, you can get warmer clothes and better gear and it actually has, uh, a cold weather, like, uh, defense rating system on each piece of gear now and clothing and that will raise your defense level so that you can survive the elements outside in the cold. And if your defense level is lower than... Uh, if, if the environment temperature is colder than your... obviously colder than your uh, clothing level, then 
you can start to get hypothermia and your life will slowly drain. And now to, uh, to stop that and to get warmer, you know, you, you, there's garbage cans around that are lit on fire. Uh, there's, you know, you, you can actually light garbage cans on fire, uh, to get warmth. You can go into other hideouts and stuff like that. Uh, and also as you go along, you can, uh, you can pick up items and supplies and crafting, uh, crafting supplies and you can go to crafting tables and craft weapons and gear and stuff like that to survive. So it's a, it's a really, it's a really neat, uh, game mode. And one of the, th like I said this in my video that I made yesterday too, one of the, one of my favorite things, one of the things I like the most about loot based games is when you first start playing these games, it, there, it's just really fun getting on that, on that loot grind, right? You know, every item you get is relevant. Every item you get is an upgrade from the item that you currently have, right? So it, it, you know, it, that's what makes that, that, that loot grind fun. And it seems like a lot of these games, it eventually levels out or it tapers off and it starts getting redundant. You know, that can definitely happen. Destiny, you know, which is my base game that I play daily. Uh, but it can definitely happen in that, you know, once you get near your max light level and stuff like that. So, but what this survival mode does every single time you play it every time you load into an instance into the mode every single time you have this it has a chance to provide you you know with that type of enjoyment of that 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 loot grind because uh, every time you load into it it actually it starts you from the beginning again um, and I have heard anywhere that people are having playthroughs in this mode anywhere from anywhere from five minutes to two hours so it can provide you with you know, with, with a good amount of content for a playthrough. So, uh, I ha I personally haven't made it to the dark zone yet, so I haven't even really come close to beating the mode, but I have, I have made it pretty far. Uh, another thing that that's happening, uh, during the mode is like how I, how I said earlier, you ha actually have, have an, have an infection. Uh, you, there's a timer taking down of your life, life expectancy. So, you actually have to, you can actually get medicine and painkillers and stuff like that to actually, uh, to actually slow down the spread of the infection because the longer you play, the worse the infection actually gets, right? So it can actually turn in from, uh, from, from an infection and it can eventually get up to the point of full blown sepsis and, and you know, and you get infected and die. And when you load into these instances, there actually is other human players uh in the world and the game world is actually the full map of of the uh, of the regular game world right like i said it's a standalone mode so it is a different instance of the same world uh but it is that full map you have you have that you have the full dark zone area and also the full what is referred to as the light zone area so it's a big game world when you load into an instance of the mode uh, i believe there's you and up to i think it's up to 25 uh, human controlled agents. I'm not positive, so don't quote me on that, but I think it's 25. Uh, uh, if not, it's at least like in the low 20s, I know. Because uh, the first time I played it, there's actually a feed going on that when another player player controlled agent dies, it, it, you, it will notify you in the in the feed. It will say, uh, you know, whatever the, per, whatever the agent's screen name is, you know, it will be like, you know, soldier only, you know, died from the cold or what, what not, you know, so it even lets you know how they did, uh, and like I said, if you find another agent, and what happens when you die, you actually have five minutes for a fellow agent to revive you, but now what it will do, it will actually take a health pack away from that agent, so for an agent to re revive you, it will take a health pack, but if you're playing in the PvP mode, this is interesting, what you can do, if you're playing in the PvP mode, they can either revive you, or they can actually just mercy kill you put you out of your misery shoot you in the head and take the you know take your loot that you have been able to get for themselves so it definitely it definitely provides some intense uh thrilling play playthroughs i think you know and i think this mode is exactly what the division needs uh Gathalian actually made a video and and in it he said that uh this is the best the division has ever been and i'm gonna have to fully wholeheartedly agree with him on that this is the best the division has ever been hands down uh i didn't get now granted i didn't get i didn't get the division the day it came out but i did get it about a month after after release so i have been with it 
pretty much since the beginning. You know, and just like a lot of people, you know, I've put hundreds of hours into it. I also didn't play it for the last couple months like most people haven't either. So I didn't really start playing it again until the 1.4 update that came, like I said, that came out a few weeks ago. Um, but just all around, the division is definitely coming back. It's I'm definitely going to be playing a lot more. There's definitely going to be a lot more division content coming on the channel uh, lately. So, uh, and I'm really stoked. I'm I'm really I'm really excited to play more of it. I'm actually going to play more of the survival mode later on tonight uh, after, you know, after I'm done recording this video. So it's going to be neat. So stay tuned to the channel for more on The Division in the future. Uh, another thing I wanted to go over this week real quick um, in in the world of Destiny, uh, the last couple, this TWABs, this week's at Bungie, the last couple have been to do with uh, a big thing going on in the Destiny community right now is actually... The community is really talking over Destiny's uh, connection issues. You know, the is it you know like skill-based matchmaking, or is it connection-based matchmaking? Um, just overall, my opinion in it, whatever it is, it just, it obviously just needs it needs help. You know, it needs to be redone, and that's just going to kind of lead into uh, my Destiny Two wish list. Hands down, and, and this is pretty much par for the course for everybody in the Destiny community, hands down, what everyone wants more than anything right now is dedicated servers, 60 frames per second. You know, they want these connection issues resolved because we're, we're, we're pretty much in that, in that part now uh, with Destiny Rise of Iron. We're pretty much at that, at that moment now where we, we, we've all done all the content from it, you know, so we're, we're getting into that content drought with Destiny. And when you're in this content drought with it, what keep, what keeps pushing the game along is it's PVP. And if the, and if the connection issues are this bad in PVP, players are going to go elsewhere. You're going to see a big, big, uh, player base drop off on, on Destiny. If the, if these connection issues are this bad in PVP, Especially when you have great PvP games coming out, like Titanfall 2, um, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the campaign that I've played so far is, is awesome, I'm loving it, but f I haven't played any of the PvP yet, but from what I understand, it's pretty much just like Black Ops 3 P PvP, from what I hear is it, it hasn't really changed at all, so, and it, for, say what you will about Call of Duty, but their PvP is great, you know, so it is fun, so, I mean, there's that, I mean, Overwatch has still just been steadily killing it since it came out earlier this year, so there's all these other games, you know, that PvP-based games that these Des Destiny players can go to, so, um, another thing I, I would like to see, uh, in Destiny 2, I'm pretty much about 50-50 on, on the topic of, uh, if our players, if our characters are going to get carried over into Destiny 2 with, with, you know, our same light levels and gear and items and all that, I'm pretty much 50-50. I, I, on one hand, I would love it if we did have our characters carry over. But on the other hand, I also wouldn't really mind if we did start over. And like I said, how I said earlier in this video, I love that loot grind, you know. Like I said, when you first start playing, just getting in that grind where every item is relevant, you know, so you're not, you're not, you're not looting and collecting stuff that, you know, you don't even need or want, so, um, when it comes to that, I'm pretty much fine either way, I definitely, uh, I definitely want to see a Cabal raid and strike, I definitely want to, I definitely want to learn more about, like, the, the stranger, uh, I want to, I want to learn more about the traveler, you know, there's still so much mystery behind wh what the traveler even is, and all that, um, I'm and I'm just excited, you know, just just more planets. Uh, and from w one of the rumors going around is that there is supposed to actually be bigger play, bigger play spaces, bigger worlds. Uh, supposedly, uh, one thing that's kind of going around rumored is that you'll have play spaces that are like. I think I I don't want to get this wrong, but I think it was a Kotaku article uh, when they were kind of leaking some of the Destiny Two rumors about it being on PC and so forth. Uh, but they were saying uh, that some of the play spaces are rumored to be bigger than all the previous play spaces c 
combine. And and what they said is like you you can go in these play spaces and just like in when you're when you're in a patrol in the current game you know there's these missions throughout it will be like that but it will be a lot it will be on a much bigger scale where there's towns and outposts and vendors supply shops you know so kind of like how the tower is but actually built into a play space I think that would be pretty cool to see uh, so you don't have to you know go to orbit and fly. Uh, you know, to the tower, how it's separated from your play space in the current game. So that would be pretty neat to see as well. Um, one rumor going around right now, a lot of people are hoping that Destiny 2 finally gets officially announced at the PlayStation Experience, which is coming up here in December. Um, I think it's the beginning of December. I would have, I would have to double check, but I, I know it's like at, at the first part of December is the PlayStation Experience. Uh, Destiny Rise of Iron is confirmed to be there. Uh, it's actually on the, online on the list of games that are confirmed to be showing there. So what that pretty much means is that I think you can easily say that Sparrow League is probably going to be teased there. I'm sure we'll, we'll probably get some Sparrow League announcements. Fingers crossed for maybe a Destiny 2, uh, at least teaser, uh, maybe Easter egg or sneak peek, something like that. But... Activision has said, Activision and Bungie have both said that Destiny 2 is going to come out in 2017. They haven't said what time, but I think it's pretty safe to say that, that September uh, is kind of my guess, because it's actually a lot of people in the community's guess, because September always seems to be that month where that Bungie likes releasing in their stuff. Uh, Vanilla Destiny, Taken King, and Rise of Iron were all released in September of their respective years, so I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, a lot of people are expecting it around September of 2017. So I, I can't wait till we finally get to start seeing something from Destiny 2. Uh, I think either way it's going to be phenomenal. You know, I, I just can't imagine that Bungie won't do, you know, dedicated servers, hopefully 60 frames per second, and just it, it, it's, it's, it would just be an awesome game. Destiny easily has some of the best gunplay in any first-person shooter ever. Uh, it's just, just the feeling of that game is so, so amazing, and it's definitely one of my favorite games ever, so definitely looking forward to that. I've actually recently started playing Borderlands. Uh, I finally got into Borderlands the other day. I'm playing Borderlands 2 right now, so I just want to note real quick before I end the, this week's episode, uh, there is going to be more, uh, there, you're, you're actually going to start seeing some Borderlands content coming to the channel uh, really soon in the in the near future. So that's going to do it for this week. Uh, you can click the logo in the corner at the end of the video to sub to the channel for more content. You can follow me on Twitter at SportsNerd48. Uh, keep up to date with everything on the channel. I also tweet out when I go live on my live streams at twitch.tv soldieronly Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Cheers.